An off-road focus adventure bike with 160 horsepower. Sounds like fun. The 1290 Super Adventure R is the big daddy in KTM's range of travel bikes. Big engine, big power, big presence. It certainly has all of those, but in this video, I aim to find out what this is like as an all-round bike. From its short stubby screen, high ground clearance, crash bars and knobbly tyres, this bike screams rugged adventure bike for sure, and I must admit I have grown fond of its looks. The bike is still packed with tech, but it does miss out on the semi-active electronic suspension and the radar adaptive cruise control found on the S model. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the road test where I can give you my thoughts on the bike, as well as share with you all of the key stats and numbers. Okay, so let's not mess around with the format too much and we'll start where I normally do with ergonomics. Now this is a big bike, there's no denying that, it's a tall bike. Seat height is 880 millimeters and I'm kind of on the balls of my feet. I've got a 32 inch inside leg, five foot 10. But I must admit, once you get on it and get riding, it kind of loses its mass. 221 kilos dry, which for a bike with a 1300cc V-twin in it is not bad at all. And again with this bike as they have with the 790 and 890 Adventures, is it's got that saddlebag tank. So we've got a big 23 litre tank, but it drops down low at the sides keeps the center of gravity low and that does make a difference because this bike compared to some of the other big adventure bikes I've ridden does feel a bit better balanced doesn't feel as top heavy and you notice that when you go off-road that low center of gravity uh, really does make a difference we've got a nice big TFT screen loads of information on that the controls are the same as the Adventure S and uh, largely the same as the Super Duke R and the Super GT no problems with those, really easy to use, they're all backlit. The seat is pretty comfy as well, there's a nice sized pillion seat. I found this to be pretty good, it's much the same as any seat. Once you've spent a couple of hours in it, you kind of could do with a rest and give yourself a bit of a breather. The seat is pretty narrow at the front, which helps with getting your feet down. Other handy little things are the little compartment here. So I can get a phone in there, my keys, this is a keyless, so generally would put the fob in there if I'm riding or, or in my pocket. There's a little USB port in there as well so if you want to charge phones, if you're using the KTM My Ride app, plug your phone in, put it there safe out of the way and you've got all of the controls on the screen that you need. There's a nice rear rack that comes as standard on this. If you use things like Krieger bags you can put the Krieger KTM OS loops on there uh, which gives you a really neat solution. And I guess the other thing to talk about in terms of ergonomics is the screen now obviously this being the off-road version of the 1290 super adventure you've got a low screen at the moment here it's in its highest position twist the knob that's it in its lowest position and as you'd expect with a more off-road focused bike you want that screen low and out of the way not obscuring your view of the trail and also not something you're going to smack your head on when you're up on the pegs going through rough terrain. As far as its performance on the road is concerned, well, you're gonna get buffeting. It will vary depending on the helmet you're wearing and your stature and everything else. In the lowest position, you can feel the wind on your chest, so it'd be good for airflow, but it is noisy. And in the highest position, it's just slightly less noisy with slightly less wind. But as I said earlier, it does really depend on what you're wearing helmet wise i've had the opportunity to ride this in several helmets in this helmet it's not too bad but actually i found the aero commander which is the the newest helmet that i've added to my collection is actually pretty quiet in this so the the shape and the design of the helmets can have a big impact on the effect of that screen this bike is is aimed at somebody who's going to ride more trails more dirt roads uh, than tarmac and whilst it is a fantastic handling machine the S is a better machine I think on road this has got relatively aggressive AX41 Bridgestone tyres on which I must admit on dry tarmac have been good they're a little bit interesting on wet tarmac particularly when you're pushing 160 horsepower through them so rain mode is definitely advised turning my attention to the engine well if you've seen my reviews of the 1290 Super Duke R and the Adventure S uh, you'll know I'm a fan of this engine, it is an absolute peach. 
in this tune for this bike things have been dialed down a little bit so it puts at 160 horsepower which is obviously still a lot and 138 newton meters of torque so you've lost some of that top end power um, but you've not really lost well virtually nothing in terms of the torque which is obviously much better suited for use off-road it's supremely flexible super comfortable to use it's very relaxed but you've just got gobfuls of power under your right wrist i'm not noticing it really kicking out too much heat it's not been that warm it hit sort of 19 degrees earlier today but this new kind of split rad that they've got and the way they've changed the airflow means that that hot air does seem to be getting kicked out from behind you obviously the problem with that v-twin on these bikes is you get that big header that sits right underneath you and uh, yet yeah, the engine's going to kick out heat it's a big 1300 but i think it's been really managed well on this and i don't think you're really going to notice it until you're kind of sitting in stationary in warm weather and that's going to be the same for every bike there have been some few changes on this model for example they've moved the headstock back 15 mil to shorten that chassis that's quickened up the steering and by the same token they've extended the swing arm by 15 millimeters to give it a little bit more stability its handling does belie the bike size it's very nimble and uh, you can certainly ride it enthusiastically both on and off road the wp explore suspension does a fantastic job plenty of adjustability you've got compression and rebound damping uh, on the front and you've got the full works on the back you've got a separate hydraulic preload adjuster you've got compression and damping both slow speed and high speed but as i've always found with the r version of these bikes the suspension is just fantastic it's one reason why if i lose my 790 adventure i am considering an 890 adventure r not because i want that extra off-road ability it's just that that suspension is such a big improvement over the stock one and again it's not just about being able to take the hits and riding off-road it's also about the control and the damping on the tarmac <laughs> Yeah, such a great engine, such a great engine. You can actually have a lot of fun on this, on the twisties on tarmac, but I think it's definitely a more at the person that's gonna be spending a lot of time on dirt trails, gravel trails, fire roads, more serious off-road. But if you're going to be doing that but you've got long sections of tarmac to join that together where you want to be able to cruise comfortably and quickly then the adventure r is definitely the bike for you so it's an incredibly accomplished motorcycle it's a perfect touring machine particularly if you're going to be doing a lot of that touring away from the tarmac but so it should be at sixteen thousand six hundred and forty nine pounds it's not a cheap bike but you do get a lot for your money. I guess it is a bit of a do it all bike. It's a bit of a Swiss army knife. Yeah, you can do miles and miles and miles of tarmac. It'll be slightly more comfortable on the standard model, but you can do that just the same on this. It looks great. I think I like this colorway. KTMs are sort of growing on me all the time. And uh, certainly the slightly, I wouldn't say this is more muted, but there's a bit less orange on it. It's nice and relaxed and manageable around town. It's great on the motorway, very quick to turn, everything feels very precise, less lazy I guess than, than some others that I've ridden. Now obviously this is not gnarly technical trails, I'm struggling to get some of that in, uh, in this part of the world and even if I did find it I'm not the man to test that out fully. If you want to see what this bike can really do I suggest heading over to the KTM youtube channel and having a look at chris birch's video i'll leave a link to that in the top corner um, but yeah simple controls obviously you've got uh, the menus to work through so if i push that to the right i've got the bike info the trip info uh, the motorcycle which includes the ride mode so i'm just going to flick through that to off-road it asked me to close the throttle oh and that's my wet boot <laughs> 
Yeah. And whilst I was doing that, I didn't notice how deep that puddle was. So we're now in off-road mode, back out of that. There is a quicker way to do that. You've got custom buttons here. So you can flick those. I've set that to pull back on that and that takes me straight to the ride mode. If I push forward on it, that takes me to the ABS mode. But the one thing I'm saying about this is you do feel supremely comfortable on this bike. It just soaks up the rough terrain and it does feel balanced because of that low center of gravity you can shift your weight on the pegs and move the bike around really quickly and easily and this is where those AX41 tires come into their own as well this way might have the bigger puddles because this is where the 4x4s come uh, actually, it doesn't look too bad here. I'm not going down there. Because that's going to end in disaster. <laughs> because of the balance of the bike and the excellent suspension, you feel really comfortable just whipping through these sort of places. switch to my other GoPro now just looking at my fat belly uh, but the standing position is really good on here I'm not having to lean forward or reach too much for the bars I've got a really nice platform and I can actually if I look down here I don't take my eyes off the trail for too much in case there's another big hole but here I can grab the front of the seat with my knees so I've got a comfortable padded bit but I've got some decent grip there as well Now on this bike, KTM have decided to put Akron tubeless rims on where most manufacturers that go down that off-road route tend to put a tube tyre on Now that means, obviously, plug repairs are a much easier process you don't have to get the wheel off to change a tube The only time that would be a downfall is if you're riding this in particularly tough off-road conditions maybe sharp rocks and you tear the side wall of the tyre out and uh, obviously that's toast I think it's probably a good time to wrap up the review now because there's not much I can add to it uh, lots of positives, the suspension's fantastic, the handling is fantastic uh, the engine's great, it's comfortable uh, you could do hundreds of miles on this whether that's on dirt or on tarmac if I'm looking at negatives or well, the screen is a compromise for that off-road use and look the screen is going to have to be lower so you're going to have to put up with more wind noise uh, or just more wind generally on you it wouldn't really be fair to say that, that the price is a negative £16,600 is a lot of money but as I said this is a lot of bike but other than that I'm really finding it hard to, to pick any faults really without being extremely niggly and that's something I find in a lot of bike reviews now you kind of have to appreciate just how good modern motorcycles are and it's down to personal preference and kind of what you want the bike to do so whilst obviously you have to show good and bad as part of a balanced review more often than not the good points are much more evident than the bad points anyway that's besides the point I'm starting to ramble now so I hope you found the video useful if you've got any questions about the bike then let me know in the comment section down below by the same token if you are an owner of this bike it's always good to get feedback from people that have had the bike I've only had this for a couple of weeks I try to ride as much as I can in that time to, to get to really know the bike but obviously that's not the same as an ownership experience so if you own one of those bikes I'd love to hear your thoughts on that um, liking and subscribing is very much appreciated 
I do have a Patreon page now, so if you'd like to support the channel, you can go away and find out, and I'll put a link in the description. And all that leaves me to say is, until next time, thanks for watching, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.